Tosh, when you're ready, we can get started with in-person questions. Hey, Tosh. What's up, Kareem? Wild season, ton of adversity, injuries, and ups and downs, and all that kind of stuff. When you look back on this year, what's going to stick out in your mind? Um, our relentlessness. We were dealt a lot of storms this season, and we figured a way out. We battled. We pushed through. Uh, we played crazy amount of minutes. We played with seven at times. We played with eight at other times. Um, we were relentless this entire season, and so a moment like this sucks because uh, I feel like we could have taken this series back to D.C. Um, that's not how it played out, but I am really proud of the relentlessness of this group. And um, if you look at our team and any other team in the W, if they lost three starters, what would they be? They wouldn't be in playoffs. So it says a lot about our team. It says a lot about the grit and relentlessness that Washington Mystics basketball plays with. Um, I know y'all counted us out, um, but again, you have a team lose three starters for two months of their season. Are they going to end up in playoffs? It's 30 points off the board each night. You know, going into tonight, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You do a lot of times, but specifically this time. Um, and Elena just said a minute ago, she, you know, she could see it from you um, in warm-ups that I kind of saw you also. You kind of had this look on your face. Um, what was going through your mind kind of before the game, how you wanted to approach it, and then what started working so well once you got, you know, cooking from early? I was going to be a villain and I was going to be a dog tonight, and I was going to stay on Sabrina for as much as I could at the game. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, I also, I want to establish myself. I'm a first team all defense. I'm first team all defense, and I don't get the credit. I know that we have a defensive player of the year starting at the top of our uh, defense, but she has a first team all defense behind her too. Um, and so I wanted to establish myself and also as a point guard. I'm one of the best point guards in this league, period. And I don't get the respect that I re deserve. So in a game like this, environment like this, I just wanted to lead by example first and foremost, and we needed a dog tonight. Um, and I think everyone followed suit and just didn't have enough in our tank. Thank you, Kareem. Oh, we got Pepper in the front, and then I'll come to you. Alexa. That's cool. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Tasha. It's good Hi, to see you. Um, we just had your coach and Elena in here, and they both talked about kind of what you mean to this team. So from your perspective, what does it mean to have their full support in a night where you had your career high? Oh, man. You're going to get me emotional. I have been in D.C. for eight years. It is the only team that looked at me coming out of college. It is the only coaching staff that believed in me. I went through a lot of growing pains throughout my career. Um, so to be where I am today, to be where my feet are today, I'm really proud. And I know the younger version of myself would be proud. I know my family is really proud. And the support that I've had from the Mystics organization, both on and off the court, you don't see that in this league. I can be a villain. Um, I say what I want. I say it with my chest. And that can sometimes um, reflect badly, not only on myself, but the organization. But, um, you know, when you ruffle feathers, it's good trouble, right? And to have an organization we see in sports world, um, players that speak up can be blackballed out. They can lose their jobs. Um, they can be moved. So to have the support of the Mystics organization through and through, it's been a blessing for eight years. But it really means a lot to me to wear DC across my chest. And yeah, I just hope that I made our organization, our fans, and my family proud. I'm still a thug, y'all. Even though I cry, these are thug tears. <laughs> oh. Hey, Tosh. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit, um, going off of Pep's question, actually, about your offense. You talked about being a villain defensively, but, yeah. I mean, you really put on a show today. And although some people in the crowd were definitely waving, <laughs> I think you also, you know, you, a you lot got of a lot of... Exactly. So what's your reaction to first how you were able to perform offense? Because you put us on notice of that as well. Yeah. Um, but then the crowd and, and the, the reception that you've received. Yeah, I've grown a lot offensively, and shout out to my 
trainer James Clark and Safu Bernard, our position coach, because they've really helped me just grow and be confident in my game and just continue to expand. Um, every year I want to get better, and so we have goals in the off season of where I can be better, and I really try to work my hardest to just be the best version of myself uh, every year and every game for my team. So um, I'm really proud of my performance. Uh, I am a player, though, that defense brings my offense so because I was so amped up on defense with Sabrina I felt like it was my night but also I didn't help us in game one um having like what I think I had four points in game one maybe seven I don't even know what it was but uh I've been the scorer for this team and I feel like I let our team down in game one so I just wanted to come out and just be aggressive and uh it helps me as a point guard I think sometimes people can forget yes I, I'm a point guard I love passing more than I love scoring that's a rare thing um and I understand what my job is to get the scorers around me the ball and put them in successful situations. But uh, sometimes I forget that if I'm aggressive, it actually opens up what I want to do even more. It makes my job easier to assist, and I feel like that's what happens tonight. Um, but yeah, the love that I felt off the court, you know, the waving, I'm from Philly, so that shit don't bother me. Uh, that's part of the game. That's, that's a part of being a fan too. But uh, that's what got me upset out there was just feeling all the love from your fans. Um, so I really appreciate that, Liberty fans. Um, it was a great environment to play in. Like this is things that we dreamed of since the time that we were kids. So um, to feel that love, <clears throat> coming off the court it just was like a reiteration to me that i really did leave everything that i could on the floor and i knew new york is very similar to philly we love hard workers we love gritty ass players so i really did appreciate it so thank y'all uh, thank you natasha two quick ones for you first what did you think was the ultimate difference i guess especially in overtime mm -hmm. um secondly you and sabrina had hugged it out after the game so yeah. you don't have to necessarily yeah. Disclose what you've said to each other if you don't want to, but what was that moment like? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest uh, difference was, I mean, I feel like we could have closed it out. Uh, probably should have challenged that JJ fell at the end of the game just to try to challenge it, see if we get a call. Um, the difference in overtime, we just missed some chippies, and uh, they were able to capitalize off those chippies, and they went to their main mains, and they made plays. And uh, it's really hard to go down to the wire with a really good team, right? It can shift anyway. So um, that, that was the difference in the overtime. And then after the game, you know, I knew I talked shit, and I know I was in Sabrina's stuff, and I know I took a few hard fouls on her. Um, even though I take that villain role in the game, I have a lot of respect for what Sabrina and who Sabrina is, what she is to our league, who she is as a player. Um, and so I just wanted iron sharpens iron. Uh, so that, that's what I said to her. Um, it's no bad love or anything. I really do respect her as a player um, enough that I had to make her my primary focus tonight in game two. But um, I just wanted to make sure that I said that because sometimes, you know, everyone loves W beef, but I don't want no beef. It's all respect. It's all love. Like, I this. I, I talk my shit and I feel like I had to come in and, and cash that deposit that I made. So, um, no, it's just all love. Thank you. In the back, um, you know, as you start to reflect on this game, is there one basket or one moment that for whatever reason is just sticking out in your mind? Um, yeah. Personally, for me, my stupid ass turnover at the end with 10 seconds left, I thought Slim was popping and she came to the ball. So that's on me as a point guard. Um, I'm always going to take that. But it doesn't come down to one play. It, I feel like that's what I said in the locker room because obviously people are heads are down and we're upset. But it doesn't come down to one play. If we could each just be better in one area or one possession of the game, um, it makes a difference in the game. So. Uh, you know, we're not focusing on one play. We win as a team and we lose as a team. Um, and I think that's the special part about our locker room and our environment. And um, yeah, that's just how sports work. Sometimes shit doesn't fall into your favor. All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.